Hi everyone, it's Paul, W2PAK. I'm so excited about this project today. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to design, model, build, and test a Moxon Yagi antenna designed for satellite communications. I haven't had a satellite CUSA for around 25 years. I could have bought a Arrow or Elk antenna, but I decided to design my own. The goal of the project is to, is to build the entire project for less than $100, and that includes the transceiver. This great little antenna is designed really for satellite communications, but it can be used for SOTA, POTA, or any other VHF, UHF application. Come join me through this project. Before we dive in, let's quickly go over what a Moxon Yagi antenna is and why it's great for satellite operations. The Moxon Yagi is a compact, easy to build antenna that provides excellent gain and directivity. It's perfect for working low Earth orbit satellites like the International Space Station or SO50, which hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate today. I got my inspiration from an article I read from DK7ZB, who built a fixed Moxie Yagi antenna. The idea was to take his design and make it lightweight and portable enough for satellite use. So the first step is to model this thing. We'll be using Coco NEC. All right, so we open Coco NEC 2.0. I'm gonna open up my design. It's called my Moxon.NEC, and I'm gonna run it. And I will show you the exact dimensions in a bit, but I wanna start with the geometry. So this is what it looks like. And if you look at the Smith chart, you can see both uh, the 70 centimeter and the two meter bands are very, very good in SWR, um, in the SWR domain. And we're going to look at a summary here. So this is the directivity. You can see that uh, it has uh, 7.38 dBi gain on the 70 centimeter and uh, a little bit less on the two meter. Uh, everything is, is here. So the uh, front to back ratio is very good on both bands. And uh, so, is the, uh, so is the directivity and the gain. So this is the antenna I ended up with. Um, what I did was I added another element here uh, to help with a little bit more gain and directivity. Uh, basically, this is the two meter radiating element. This is the two meter reflector, and these are the 70 centimeter elements. So this is the model. This is the design. It's looking pretty good. And um, let's let's go build this thing. From the model we just saw, I made a mechanical schematic of this antenna. I used a three quarters of an inch square PVC for the boom. I cut the boom to exactly three feet. It doesn't have to be exact, of course, but that worked for me well. That's a 0 0.914 meters. Everything else on the schematic is meters, by the way. I uh, drilled the holes. As you can see on the boom, I uh, in the holes, I put these little silicon grommets uh, to uh, finish it up and hold the elements. For the elements, I used these five millimeter copper rods I found on Amazon. I'll put a link below in the description. I then cut the copper rods according to spec. And then I constructed the two meter reflector and driving element. I used these little copper elbow couplers that I found on Amazon. And all I did is I put them like so, and I soldered them. I used this little torch that I have. You could use a soldering iron, but I didn't have a large soldering iron. So this little torch did a great job. The final product looked like this. One of the important parts of this antenna is the spacer between the radiating element and the reflecting element for two meters. I used these little spacers I found in the hardware store. The reason I chose to use this one is because it has exactly five millimeter hole 
in the middle, which worked out really well. I ended up using a little spacer I found also in the hardware store. And I, when I coupled two together, I had exactly 52 millimeters, which is what we were looking for. And then I put a little heat shrink on it. You can see it here. And that made a really nice finish to these spacers. I inserted the elements using a seven millimeter silicon grommet. Uh, it fits really nice and snug. It actually gives a lot of mechanical stability to this element and it, and I think it makes a nice finish as well. I then mounted the transceiver, used a little bracket I got on Amazon as well. And I routed the coax inside the boom to the uh, driven element on uh, the two meter C-shaped radiator. I also found these nifty little caps for the end of the elements and these nifty little caps for the ends of the boom. Just gives it a nice finish. As a little extra, I put a little tripod mount here, just so I can put it on a tripod if I ever want to use it in a, a fixed application. So this is what the final product looks like. As you can see, uh, everything looks uh, pretty good, pretty finished. Um, it's, it's pretty well balanced. Let's go check the SWR. The only thing that I had that could measure SWR up to 450 megahertz was my nano VNA. So I used that to measure SWR. Here's the two meter band. You can see that it ranges between 1.485 to let's call it 1.65 or so. And uh, this is the 70 centimeter band. Uh, goes from probably 1.9 down at a minimum to 1.040 at 430 megahertz up to about 2.1 uh, at uh, 450. But honestly, I never get up to 450. Anyway, the satellites operate in a pretty good SWR region here. So that's the SWR, looks pretty good. Uh, now let's take this out to the field and see what happens. So I drove out to a local park because there's a satellite that's going to be coming overhead in a couple minutes. This is what it looks like in the field. We're going to see what it really can do. I ended up bolting on a uh, Biofang UV16. It was about 35 bucks from Amazon. 10 watts. Very light. I like it. Let's see how it performs. I'll be back in a few minutes when the satellite's actually here. Whiskey 2 Pop Alpha Kilo. Foxtrot Mike 1.8. Roger, this is my first QS over a satellite in 25 years, 73 is QSL. QSL. SL50, it worked. Well, there you have it. Um, I had a couple other QSOs, I didn't want to bore you. But um, yeah, this Moxon Yagi really worked really well. Uh, this uh, Biofang, very cheap UV16, uh, did a great job. You could always upgrade. There are some duplex Chinese um, transceivers. There's some, you know, Kenwoods. There's some other uh, high-grade uh, transceivers that are full duplex. You could try that. But uh, this whole thing is less than $100. Talking on a satellite, pretty kind of neat little project. I really had fun. I hope you guys had fun watching the video. Uh, if you want more content, please subscribe. 73s, my friends.